It feels like a new day in the NFL. The landscape has shifted oh, yeah. for a handful of teams after yesterday's action. Peter, if you have to pick a most Ooh. intriguing storyline, team, Ooh. direction after the trade deadline, where do you take us? There's a lot, a lot of teams made deals and other teams sat on their hands and right. didn't do anything. What do you do? Um, I'm going with Miami where Ian just left okay. off. I, I think the Dolphins made a statement that, hey, we're here for this thing. This is not just us looking to make the playoffs. We're here... To do something in the playoffs, you go and trade for Bradley Chubb, who's in the final year of a contract, and he's looking to make you know one of those monster deals. Yeah. You're doing this because you see a window right now. Okay. Um, they did this in March, remember, and they went and got Tyreek Hill. They did this in March, remember, when they went and got Teron Armstead. They did this in March when they went ahead and they said, we're, we're playing for now. We're not playing for five years from now. We are going to support Tua on offense. Here's the play on defense. Chubb traded for their lone first-round pick, which they got, of course, in a previous deal for the Trey Lance pick, eventually what that would end up being. Uh, I, I would say this. This, this Miami team, Sees the Josh Allens, sees the Patrick Mahomes, yep. sees the Lamar Jacksons, sees the Joe Burrow, sees the Justin Herberts. They said, our pass rush just is not good enough yet. Let's get ourselves a guy who is an elite pass rusher. Bradley Chubb could be that. And I mentioned the Trey Lance deal. They traded, uh, you know, picked back to get, so the San Francisco move up. Look at some of the players that they've gotten out of this deal. Oh. The 2021 first round pick ended up being Jalen Waddell. Mm -hmm. The 2022 first round pick in a circuitous way ended up being Tyreek Hill because they would swap that yep. for Tyreek. And then the 2023 first round pick ends up being Bradley Chubb. Trey Lance, heck of a college product. I don't know if they were ever going to get that out of that deal. So I, I look at the Dolphins. They are the ones who have maximized not only the Tunzel trade, but now this trade. And I think they're here to play, and they're not looking to mm -hmm. just get to the playoffs. I think they want to win the AFC, and I respect it. They're all in. Oh yeah, I love that. Down in South Beach, they're trying to get championships. Yeah. For me, I looked at the Minnesota Vikings. This is a team that's sitting at 6-1. and one. They're performing well. They're at the top of their division. And they didn't just hang tight. They didn't just say, hey, we're fine. We're going to roll with what we got. They went and got, went and got TJ Hawkins at tight end. Yes, they have Justin Jefferson. They have Dalvin Cook. K.J. Osborne has become a solidified receiver. And then we all know Adam Thielen, the consistent veteran that's there on offense. But they were like, we need some production out of our tight ends. We haven't gotten that. And we're still winning games. Let's go get Hawkinson, a guy that's made plays this season, was a high-round draft pick for Detroit. And now he goes over to Minnesota and individual trade to their rival and he has an opportunity to step up big and be another outlet for Kirk Cousins. So far, they haven't gotten anything from their tight ends. 26 in receiving yards and last in yards per catch. Let's see where TJ Hawkinson shows up in yards per catch amongst tight ends throughout the NFL. He sits at the top of that. And you see where the Vikings are at the very bottom, 7.3 yards. He's doubling that. So this is a weapon that will be inserted in their offense, a team that is performing really well right now, adding another weapon for Kirk Cousins to be able to get the ball out and make plays not only underneath but downfield because Hawkinson is good once he gets the ball in his hands as well. And remember the Vikings had to list Irv Smith Jr. on IR yesterday yep. out eight to ten weeks with mm. an ankle injury and that news came after the trade yep. was solidified. Mm. They have the best offensive huddle in the league. That's that's the one. At Cincinnati I hear you and everything. That's the best offensive huddle in the league. And I want to talk about the Bears interesting interesting stuff with Chicago. Yesterday I sat here and said I'm a fan of, of GM Ryan Poles. Mm -hmm. I like what he's doing. And then yesterday happened, and I'm a bigger fan of GM Ryan Pulse. <laughs> I am, because here's the deal. Everybody wants to scream and scream, how do you not get Justin Fields' help? You have to help him. What are you doing? What are you doing? And then they go and get Chase Claypool, and it's like, what are you doing? Why would you get Chase? A second-round pick. They're just doing what you just said to do. He sat down yesterday, answered all the questions, talked about the Roquan thing. He said, look, Roquan, we were not going to meet in the middle. He doesn't have an agent, and I think he was going to leave at the end of the year, and we get nothing. So we made it a deal now. Mm -hmm. Chase Claypool, why did he spend a second-round pick? Because we had nine picks, and that was the choice. And here's the deal. Everyone's saying, but your deal with the Bears was you were going to keep all these picks, and it was going to be the draft, and it's going to be free agents. And he's like, it is. But we have nine games left to play this year. We have to play the Bills. We have to play the Eagles. We have to get our quarterback through this season in one piece. Like, we need to get him something to help him. They got a big, strong, massive wide receiver with, I think, a chip on his shoulder, and I like it. And in terms of GMFB business, really interesting developments here in the Good Morning Football program as it pertains to angry runs. You might remember, if you saw the segment yesterday, Chase Claypool won angry runs as a stealer, and here's how we ended it. <laughs> Chase Claypool is going to win the Angry Run Scepter. Wow. Should we send it to Pittsburgh? Or maybe do we wait and send it somewhere else? Chase Claypool, if that was your last game as a Steeler, 
This is your first moment with a scepter. Mm. You want it, you deserve it. We will find out where we're sending it. Okay, so that happens. He becomes a bear. I was in contact with the Chicago Bears organization yesterday. Yes. They're like, <laughs> we got you. First priority. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, before, where, before I get where do I mail the scepter? When does he we land? We redirected the FedEx from Pittsburgh to Chicago, and the Bears are saying, we got you. As soon as it gets here, as soon as Chase gets here, We're we'll ready. it up, we'll send it. They're ready. So, like, they're excited, and Bears fans, I think you should be too. Yep. Uh, Chase, don't. meet Coach Eberflus. And also, can you do a photo shoot with yeah. his scepter <laughs> if you can? We're going to need to get a video too. <laughs> we have this thing here. From good yeah. All right, here you go. He'll be ready. It's no, be I need him to get off the plane at O'Hare with the scepter holding his name, like Chase Claypool. That's the sign. That's what I'm Just saying. Like, That's right. Scepter. It'll be a baggage for you. A it. welcome yes. scepter. Right. A welcome scepter. I like this half the table is very much like bolstering teams that are going to have a lot of success this season. This side's a little bit more like, let's fix a problem now but also in the future and that's where I'm going because the most intriguing to me is not going to happen this season because Calvin Ridley is still mm. suspended oh uh, the entirety of the 2022 season he is allowed to apply for reinstatement in February of next year to go to Jacksonville of course Calvin Ridley was with the Falcons and he had some great years with the Falcons Matt Ryan made him look really good those two are growing together but listen the times have changed in Atlanta who knows who their quarterback is going to be moving forward their coaching regime has changed GMs have changed it, Calvin really didn't feel like he had a spot in the room anymore and he was talked about last year when he was away from the team being traded teams were interested I read that Jacksonville was one of those teams so now a year later Jacksonville Interested again, Doug Peterson, a new coach, but he's interested again. And if he returns to Jacksonville next season, Trevor Lawrence, he's he's playing into his potential, I believe. This is a quarterback that is growing. And if you have Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley on an offense moving forward and Travis Etienne, this could be really, really exciting for Jacksonville. This is a young wide receiver, 27 years old, who is playing great. He was playing really great. He had to leave the Falcons last year in the middle of the season due to health purposes and then to get suspended this season. You hope he's working out. You hope his mind is right. So when he returns to this Jacksonville offense, that, I, I hear you, despite losing five straight, it's one-score games. They're right there. They feel like they're right there. I and hope this so. is an option. This is an option that could make Trevor Lawrence, I think, look really good. This is an interesting one because yeah. he missed yeah. a lot of time with mental health. He said, yeah. I, I can't, I'm, I'm out, I'm going to take, and the Falcons were great about it. Hey, take your time. You're still going to, you know, get paid all the, and then the gambling suspension, which yep. we can say, I know the NFL Network, it's a gambling suspension. Yeah. That's yep. what it is. That's two years away from the game. Yeah. And now you're saying, okay, let's plop him in there. I'm curious to see what version of him we get, and I hope for the best. I yeah. hope that he's – but, like, just like Deshaun Watson, yeah. it's two years away from these guys. What version do we get? Are we getting the one we remember? Or is this someone who has been away from sports Reminds for years? Reminds me of Le'Veon Bell, like, where, like, when he comes back from sitting now, he's going to be the same, and I don't know if he's boxing now. So, uh, Kevin yeah. Ridley, yeah. we'll see. Yep, it goes to show what those guys do when they're away from the game. It's a lot harder when it's not all structure. You don't mm -hmm. have breakfast at this time, mm -hmm. training at this time. When you're away from the facility, away from your guys, how are you structuring your life? Are you getting that work in? Mm -hmm. If he's one of those guys, he's young enough, he'll come back, he'll be ready. But Le'Veon Bell's a good example. Mm -hmm. Compensation, to, though, I'm, right. not bad, right? Not bad. Like, I'm trying to take a, a page from Pierce Schrager and be forever the optimist. Like, yeah, let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. you. Oh, 